This is Esther Lin, photographer for MMAfighting.com. And I would like to share some of my favorite images from 2016. 2016 was a year that broke records, broke convention. A roller coaster year of wild highs and devastating lows, flying cans and cards rearranged both by drug testing and a tug of war over the balance of power between fighter and promoter. The UFC was sold. And these new celebrity owners have perhaps the power to bring to this sport, if you will, the agency and appraisal that they enjoy in their own fields. In 2016, whether we were in Curitiba or Las Vegas, Manchester or Toronto, each fight week was familiar. Open workouts often kick things off with energy, spectacle, and laughter. A healthy dose of nationalism in a homecoming as the daughter of Curitiba returned to great warmth. And the pomp of a long-awaited first event on New York's hollowed court in Madison Square Garden. Workouts are more than just a display of skills. It's a closer look at your favorite fighter, at a proximity that's hard for the average fan to afford. It's a glimpse at a fighter's personality beyond their interviews, whether they're having a good time, showing off moves they shouldn't use in a fight, or just sharing the spotlight with their training partners and loved ones. There was also an unease that loomed at the start of 2016, perhaps coming off a year riddled with injuries and the loss of a huge star in Rousey into a year fettered by USADA's ensnaring net. That uncertainty created space for a new game, a new game that Conor McGregor happily cultivated with Nate Diaz, who came to reclaim the dominion over the mental diversions he'd pioneered with his brother. There were fewer press conferences than in years prior, but in 2016, they seemed to ramp up. Each fight week, we waited to see how each press conference would escalate. At times, things felt as if the empires were shaking as promoter and fighter duked it out over airwaves and absences. Reshaping the path and ultimately the destination of a prize fighter, where belts were put aside briefly for clashes that fed our fascination. While the money fight is by no means a new concept, it is, after all, prize fighting, the relentless pursuit of record breaking, appropriated from the sweet science, flourished in the star hungry MMA landscape. From thrilling verbal frays emerged new rivalries and sharpened the tongue on many others who'd heretofore relied on their combat acumen. And then, we had a kind of press conference I had not yet attended in my years of photographing mixed martial arts. 2016 contained in its center the Hallmark event, UFC 200. What should have been an enormous celebration of the promotion's achievements over 23 years as UFC 100 had been, was marred by what would later be pungently referred to as dick pills. But at the time, it was the strangest fall from, well, grace isn't the right term, an absurd fall from an already unsteady pedestal. While 2016 brought unprecedented turnover in cards, it also brought a great many improvements for fighter rights and safety in terms of weight cutting. The cleaning up of the sport is a good thing too, but it did have a wider impact than one might have hoped. Last year saw the beginning of the early official weigh-in, shortening a fighter's time at their target weight to just a few minutes to be cleared and checked by the commission. This sheared the amount of time a fighter spends dehydrated. Some had trouble adjusting to the new procedures, and the drama of the scale persisted for many who had issues before the improved protocol. Overall, 
The new policies meant better spirits and less gaunt faces at the now ceremonial weigh-ins. And in many cases, a bit more ceremony. After workouts, press conferences, and weigh-ins, it is finally time for the fights. And as always, MMA fighters showed us their steel. The year began with a life-altering brutal baptism as 2016's curtain jerker Lawler vs. Condit set the stage for an outrageous year. Both finishes and wars decimated what had come before, shaved years from lives. All while adding passages to the history of this already complicated genus of prizefighting, mixed martial arts. As with the fine arts, there is both pop, wild displays of pugilistic abandon, and there's classical displays of refined, chilling technique. And while Demetrius Johnson and Ioana Janjacic remain champion, all of the other divisions saw tumultuous turnover or controversy. And the sudden unexpected rekindling of old feuds resulted in an upset I did not have the fortune of witnessing. You all showed so much support for us here at MMA Fighting, our exile was short-lived, and I'm grateful. The fragmented UFC 200 card was redeemed by two prior nights of superb displays of the best of our sport. And at its pinnacle, a victory for the future of MMA, as the UFC crowned its first openly gay champion. There are agonizing edges in such a pointed profession too. And such as art reflects life, there is both exaltation from arduously earned achievement and there is deep pain, injury, and the utter loneliness of loss. Still, from the depths of embarrassing losses, redemption awaits, as it does in fighting. The sky remains and there is always a next day, a next time to try again. Such is the story we so adamantly love in fighting, one star setting, another rising in this brutal and beautiful cycle. Shortcomings shored, setbacks conquered. It was a crazy year. We lost so many. This year, I hope for bigger stages, more means and leverage for fighters as they battle for their share, what they have long deserved. I hope to be able to tell deeper stories, bring you more images, and perhaps some grand super fight is there waiting on the horizon. I wonder who will end 2017 as champion and what this intricate tapestry of mixed martial arts will look like as we turn to celebrate the next new year. This is Esther Lin for MMAfighting.com and thank you for watching.